What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another Battlefront 2 tips and tricks video. Today we're focusing on one of the most overlooked aspects of Battlefront 2's gameplay, the four base infantry classes. When you first hop on Battlefront 2 for your play session, you're usually expecting to play as your favorite hero or your favorite vehicle or reinforcement. But in order to get the points to play as those, you have to play the base infantry classes first. And that's what today's video is about. This is 10 infantry secrets that Battlefront 2 will not tell you. We have two other videos in this series, one for heroes and one for reinforcements. If either of those interest you, I'll have them linked below in the description. For now though, if you're ready to learn something new about the infantry classes in Battlefront 2, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and let's check it out. The first tip we're going to go over is how to maximize your infantry class's base melee damage. By default, the infantry has a pretty weak melee. It only deals 50 damage from the front and 65 from the back. However, there is a specific objective item in Galactic Assault that can maximize your melee damage output, and this is the Ion Disruptor. You find these on maps such as Naboo, Endor, and Hoth. You use them to take out the walkers or the troop transports or whatever the objective happens to be in the map, but what a lot of people don't know is that when you're holding the Ion Disruptor, your melee damage goes through the roof, and you can one-shot basically every single infantry class when you're holding the Ion Disruptor. Not only can it get you big objective points if you hit the transport or the walker, but you can instead choose to run around and hold the objective and just smack people in the face with it. It's pretty satisfying. Just keep in mind that your teammates might get annoyed with you if you're continuously holding on to the objective and not using it to contribute to winning the game. But this is a fun little tip all the same, and I definitely encourage you to try it out yourself. It's good knowledge to have when you're trying to get the Ion Disruptor shot off, but you're being surrounded by enemies. You could wipe them out with the melee, and then proceed to hit the objective. Tip number two has to do with your weapon spread when you're shooting. This is actually a pretty staple tip in most first-person shooters or just shooter games in general. When you crouch, you actually reduce the amount of spread that your shots have. This is especially apparent on fully automatic weapons like the ones that the Heavy uses. You can really tell the difference in not only the vertical spread, but also the horizontal spread. Some weapons in Battlefront 2 have attachments that are designed to reduce the spread, and if you combine that attachment with the crouch technique, you can essentially eliminate all spread and recoil from your weapon. The only downside to this, of course, is that crouching reduces your movement speed and your mobility in general. It's best to take a few shots while crouched and then move on to find a better position after that. Tip number three. The Assault, Specialist, and Heavy each have a middle ability that is their secondary weapon. The Assault has Vanguard, Specialist has Infiltration, and the Heavy has Sentry. These abilities can all be upgraded with Star Cards, and you might think, rightfully so, that that's the best course of action. You might want to hold off, though. This tip has to do with the default versions of each of those abilities, which actually last the longest out of all of the upgrades. The default Vanguard and Infiltration abilities will give you the longest boost in sprint speed, and the default Sentry ability will give you the most shots. If you're noticing that the Star Card versions of these abilities are not lasting quite as long as you'd like, try the default version out. You might be surprised at how well it actually works. These next two tips have to do with boost star cards that are shared amongst the four infantry classes. The first one we're going to talk about is Marksman, one of my personal favorite star cards in Battlefront 2. This card will reset your blaster's heat buildup with every single headshot kill you get. It also takes longer for the weapon to build up heat after you get your first headshot kill. This tip is kind of common sense, but unless it's directly brought to your attention, you might gloss over this fact. Marksman theoretically lets you shoot your blaster forever without ever having to manually cool it down. That is, of course, if you're getting consistent headshot kills. The Assault and Officer are two of my favorite classes to run this card on because their weapons are pretty easy to get headshots with. Specialist is also a good choice to run Marksman since, as a sniper, they will try to go for headshots. But like I said, this card can be run on all four classes. If you're finding a hard time placing your shots, or you find yourself building up weapon heat too quickly, try running Marksman, and try to go for those sweet headshot kills. The next boost card that we're going to talk about is also shared between the four classes, and this is Expert Weapons Handling. Similar to Marksman, this has to do with the heat buildup of your blaster. As you know, when you overheat your weapon, you get to play a mini game that gives you two chances to instantly cool down your blaster. If you hit the blue mark, your weapon heat simply resets. If you hit the yellow mark though, your weapon heat not only resets, but you can also shoot for an extended period of time without any heat buildup. 
This is where expert weapons handling comes in. It lets you shoot in that time frame for a little bit longer than you would have if you didn't have the card. The text on the card's description is a little bit misleading though, and this is where the tip comes in. If you read the card's description word for word, you would rightfully assume that it only applies to your primary blaster. What it will not tell you is that it also applies to the star cards that can be run by the Assault and the Specialist, specifically the Flash Pistol and the Stinger Pistol. These are two star cards that can be used just like a secondary weapon, and just like the primary weapon, they have a heat buildup bar. If you're running expert weapons handling and you manage to get the yellow mark in that minigame, it will apply to that star card and you can shoot for longer than you could before. This tip will be especially useful when pairing it with another tip involving the flash pistol that we're going to talk about in just a minute. We're now moving on to more class specific tips, and the first one we're going to start with is the assault. The assault has a star card called Smart Ion Grenade, or SIG for short. The description of this card says that it will detonate upon impact on shields and turrets, but what it won't tell you is that it also detonates on impact on enemies. You can throw the Smart Ion Grenade at a fellow infantryman or a hero, and it will detonate and cause direct damage to that target. When it detonates, it does roughly 90 direct damage to the target, and if they have a shield up, it will take that shield down instantly, letting you follow up with regular shots from your blaster and most likely finishing them off. The SIG has a bit of a proximity effect, where all you have to do is throw it in the direction of your target, and if it's close enough, it will automatically explode. This tip makes the list because I think most players read the description of the Smart Ion Grenade and assume that it only works on turrets, vehicles, and shields. What they don't realize is that it's also a really good offensive weapon for targets in general. You can throw it at basically anything and it will work. Since it more or less explodes on impact, it's kind of closer to an impact grenade and in a lot of cases can be more reliable than the Assault's Thermal Detonator. If you're one of those players who have stayed away from the Smart Ion Grenade for the reason I just talked about, give it a try. It might surprise you with how good it actually is. This next tip also has to do with the Assault, and it's about the aforementioned Flash Pistol. This tip is kind of a two for one, since I discovered a brand new effect that I did not know existed in Battlefront 2 before planning this tip's video out. Even the YouTubers learned something new, which is really cool about this game. So, the Flash Pistol, I think is a very underused star card, and rightfully so. It's not the strongest, even though it has a pretty powerful flash effect. Regarding the Flash, it actually stacks. If you keep shooting your target with the secondary fire of the Flash Pistol, it will continually flash them, and they will virtually be blind for as long as you are shooting them with the Flash. This is because there is no Flash immunity in Battlefront 2. Once you get hit by the first Flash, you'll get hit by a second, a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. This pistol is also the last weapon in the game that actually has the old flash effect. Before Leia got her rework with her thermal detonators, she had the last one with an actual flash grenade that blinded your screen and turned it white. The flash pistol is the only weapon in the game that now does this. The second tip involving the flash pistol, number 8 overall, is something that I just learned while doing this video. It blew my mind and is definitely a game changer and makes me want to use the flash pistol a little bit more in the large scale modes. What a lot of people may not realize about the secondary fire is that it actually goes through lightsaber hero blocks. Let's say you start damaging Darth Vader. He realizes he's taking damage and he starts blocking on you so he can get his health back. You can then switch to the flash pistol and start using the secondary fire to continually do damage through his block. This will stop his health regeneration, which is the whole point of him defending himself, and that is huge when you're playing as a hero. If you do not give the hero time to regenerate, chances are they will go down very fast. The flash effect only does 5 damage to anybody it hits, even through blocks, so it's not very reliable for damage. It's more or less just a way to stop the enemy hero from healing. This was kind of a game changer when I found this out, and I'm honestly surprised it took me two and a half years to figure out that this was in the game. I'm gonna start using the flash pistol more often. What about you? Tip number nine has to do with the heavy and the officer's turrets, which can be used offensively in more ways than just one. The game will tell you that the turrets can lock onto enemies, shields, and vehicles, and it will cause damage to them, which is one way to use it offensively. And the game will also tell you that you can detonate the turret whenever you want by hitting the ability button a second time. What the game won't tell you though is just how insanely powerful this turret detonation is. It deals a base 150 damage to anybody that is standing close to it, which means a guaranteed one-shot kill on all assaults, officers, and specialists. 
A full health heavy can tank the shot, but they will be dropped down to critical health and can be finished off very easily after that. I see turrets being detonated, I just don't see them being detonated in front of enemy players, which is a pretty good tactic, and that's why this tip makes the list. The last tip we're going to talk about has to do with the officer and another relatively underused star card, the homing shot. I won't sugarcoat this one, the homing shot absolutely sucks and it never got a buff throughout the entirety of Battlefront 2's lifespan, which is probably the biggest reason that it goes so underused. When I was testing stuff for this video though, I found out that the homing shot is actually one of few things in Battlefront 2 that can penetrate a specialist's personal shield. Most things that get rid of shields in this game are ion weapons, such as the smart ion grenade or an ion shot attachment. Hardly anything in the game physically goes through shields to damage the target hiding inside, but the officer's homing shot does, specifically on the specialist's personal shield. This makes me believe that this is actually a glitch or a bug, because I tested this on other shields. It will not go through Leia's or the officer's squad shield, it will not go through Aiden's personal shield or the droidica's shield. This will only work on the specialist's personal shield. Which I think is actually a good thing even if this is a bug, because the homing shot is more or less a useless star card unless you're really dedicated to using it. This kind of gives it a specialized use, as a counter to the specialist's personal shield, so even if this is a bug, I'm actually kind of into it. And with that, those are 10 infantry secrets in Battlefront 2 that the game will not tell you. What did you think? Did you learn anything new about the infantry classes? If you did, drop a comment below and let me know what tip helped you out the most. Again, I have versions of this video for both the heroes and the reinforcements, so if that's something you're interested in, check out the description and follow those links in there. That's going to do it from me though. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, give it a thumbs down if you didn't, just consider subscribing if you're new, and drop a comment with your thoughts below. I appreciate you stopping by the bazaar, and I will see you out on the battlefront. Peace!